Oh, look at that! <laughs> That's the one. Having sorted out the wiring loom in the previous episode, it's now simply a case of fitting it to the van. This is about as simple a loom as you can get for a multi-point injection system, but even so it helps to break it down into the separate branches. I'll start with this fixing point under the inlet manifold, as this is where all the branches merge before it goes off to the ECU. The first branch needs feeding through past the idle valve, and these wires towards the rear of the engine are next. Another fixing point at the back here helps keep them in place. The first component to fit is the ECU, and this connects with a large multi-pin connector. The casing also houses two relays which need plugging in as well. With that done, the front half can be installed. It's best to take your time here, as there are several overlapping tabs which are easy to misalign if you're not careful. It can be quite a faff to get it all in line and fitting properly, but if you go carefully it's not too bad. And it's held on with a single torque screw. Now the factory installation used a large bracket to secure the ECU to the bulkhead and I was expecting to have to replicate this but having tried it in it seems to wedge really nicely behind the battery tray and the strengthening flange on the left stops it from sliding out sideways so I'm pretty happy with how it is. If it does wriggle loose over time then I can always come back and improve it but given all the other work I've got to do I think this will be fine for now. The next thing to look at are these two relays. Now one is for the cooling fan and the other controls the ignition feed to the engine loom. Originally these would have picked up on the ECU bracket but I spotted these fixing points which are designed to take a captive bolt which are in the perfect location. These were designed to support the fuel filter on the diesel models and I guess Renault fitted them to every shell in the factory to simplify production. Now the hole in the relay is 6mm and these fixing points are designed for an M8 bolt so a couple of washers here will stop the heads from pulling through. And to stop the bolt spinning I've jammed in a right angle Torx key so I can tighten up the nut. And the earth strap is up next. This is the best shot of the knock sensor. Well, it's the only shot of the knock sensor I could get. Uh, you can see now why I fitted it on before the manifold went on.
Next up are the power steering pipes. The thread on this pump is the same as the old one, so the flow pipe just fits on as before. The return hose, however, is slightly different. Now, the old pump came from a late model 1.9 diesel, and I chose that when I fitted the system because the drive pulley was the same as the 1.7. This pump, however, is an original 2.2 one, and for some reason Renault decided to alter the hose inlet. All that really means is I need to use the hose from this pump instead. And they also decided to change the reservoir design at the same time, so I need to swap that out as well. The difference is basically just the angle at which one of the hose outlets points. Luckily, the other engine from part one had the hose and the reservoir still attached, so that's what I'm fitting here. And the final connection is the return hose from the rack. Using the bracket from the old one, I can bolt the reservoir back up. And the final piece is this clip which clamps the bracket up tightly. Next up is the fuse box. Now originally this would have been secured using another bracket roughly in this location here, but I've found on my other van that when you need to change the battery it does get in the way somewhat. So I'm thinking that down here to the side of the battery might be a better location. I found this 90 degree bracket which with a penny washer can pick up on the hole in the battery tray and support the fuse box. Moving on to the fuel rail, and when I fitted it before, I forgot to include the two clips which hold the wires on, so they need fitting first. And with that done, I can start plugging everything in. The next part to look at is the ignition module. Now this is different to the one from the 1.7 engine and to make it fit I need to remove this fold in the bracket. Now I could just cut it off but access is a bit limited here so I've decided to fold it back instead.
Although the modules are different, the fixing holes are in the same location, so I can use the original bolts to hold it in place. And this bracket will be needed to support the cooling hoses later on. The main connector can now be fitted, followed by the two on the ignition module. One's two pin and the other's three pin, so you can't get these the wrong way round. Interestingly, only three wires are used overall, so this module was probably used on a few other models as well, and I guess not every pin was needed on the traffic. This bracket supports the loom at the back of the engine and it also holds two breather pipes which I'll come on to later. There's a plastic clip round the loom which just slides into place on the bracket. Right, next up, throttle body. Next to go on is the throttle position sensor and this is held on with two M4 screws. The sensor has curved slots which allow for adjustment and you can see here just how much travel is available. The goal here when adjusting it is to reduce the amount of slack between the arm on the throttle body and the arm on the sensor to be as little as possible without going too far and rotating the sensor. Yeah, that should do. The wiring plug can then be connected into the loom. This bracket supports the inlet manifold and it ties it down to the block. Now it's only a couple of bolts either end which hold it on, but even so with access now limited they can be a bit tricky. I left it off before as I wasn't sure if it would get in the way, but if I were doing this again I'd probably fit this bracket before the engine goes in. This sensor is also needed on the 2.2 engine, so I'll salvage it from the old 1.7 pipe work. I say sensor, I think it might be a solenoid actually, but I'm not sure. Perhaps someone can correct me on that. I 
I looked at a few options for bolting it on and settled on using an existing hole which just needed tapping out to accept an M6 bolt. Now there are two air hoses which connect from this sensor to the inlet manifold but I'll tackle those later on when I sort the rest of the hoses out. Next up is the inlet temperature sensor. This is located on the inlet pipe above the TPS. This one came from that other engine and it looks fairly old so for peace of mind I'll change it for a new one. Right, that's it for this episode, so join me in part 8 where I take a look at the fuel system, carry on fitting even more sensors and try and start the engine for the very first time.